I'm wearing Filippo, I think I'm kind of interested. <laughs> and welcome to another video. Today's one is going to be a special one because we are in London actually for London Fashion Week and I'll be going to shows today and tomorrow. So I haven't actually got a London Fashion Week vlog ready yet because not everything has happened because you're watching this on my official last day of London Fashion Week but there's still a little bit more to go, you know what I mean? So we are in London and I feel really nice. To be in this back in this time zone because obviously i'm a bit closer to like my family and friends the reason why i'm filming a sit down q a video is actually i'm gonna be entirely honest with you guys when it's fashion week there are a few days that i'm like today i'm going to the shows and i don't actually i can't vlog because this day will be included in the next vlog and i'm not at home to film like a sit down video where i show you a collection or i'm styling pieces because also all the pieces that I have with me in those two suitcases are for fashion weeks so you will see them in the vlog so usually in these like bridge kind of videos I can just sit and speak to you guys which is also my favorite thing to do because I feel like it's a form of therapy for me and for you guys I hope you just get to know me better we can be like friends because that's how I feel when I speak to you you know what I mean I hope so. Anyway, today's one is a Q&A and I normally like, I kind of stop doing Q&As a little bit. I don't think I've done one in a very long time. And the reason is because the questions kind of start repeating a little bit because I grow my audience on Instagram and I, this time I wanted to ask you also on different platforms, but I grow my audience on Instagram and obviously like new people come and they don't know the same questions like my oldest and most loyal followers know. So it can be a little bit tricky to get like new fresh things but I felt like this time the questions were a little bit different. So are you ready? Shall we dive in? There's a lot that I screenshotted. So how do you cope with the stress that comes along with fashion week? I think it's quite relevant to this time, the question. And I have to be very honest, I generally cope very well with stress. I think it's, um, I don't know, I feel like it's perhaps my personality and I don't know, like I studied the fairly difficult degree like you know to graduate from pharmacy is quite stressful then to pass the huge exam that you have after a year of working is really stressful because for a year you're like studying and trying to work towards that exam but you're working at the same time that's really stressful then i feel like for me i just when it comes to stress i always try to put things in perspective like one thing that drives me a little bit anxious is tardiness so if i'm running late and that's what gives me the most stress during fashion week is being late to a show but then i always ask myself what's the worst thing that can happen you don't make the show you apologize and like it's out of your hands and honestly i always make a show unless something really bad happens like a crazy crazy unexpected situation so i would say that overall I deal very well with stress. I try to get as much sleep as I can, which is not that much, but that helps. I try to put things in perspective, like it's PR, it's not ER. And also I try to enjoy it because it is my dream job. I always remind myself, this is my dream job. So why make such a like bad thing out of it? You know, maybe like back in the day when I was starting them, it was more stressful because I was not getting like invitations that I wanted or collaborations that I wanted. But at the same time, it wasn't because I was still getting something else and I was so grateful for every little opportunity I was getting that it was more than enough, honestly. Someone says, I work in luxury, but it's difficult to defend our sector to all people that see only the superficial. You know what? There will always be people who judge anything in the world. Like it doesn't just have to be luxury. It can be beauty. It can be beauty treatments. It can be how you raise your children. It can be anything. And it's okay. You know, it's something that will always, always happen. I remember when I was a teenager, I liked to dress up and I had brands in school that would like judge me. You know, they're like, ah, why'd you do that? When I started my blogging and my YouTube career, I had friends that were judging me and telling me that I have too much time on my hands. They're now the most supporting friends, but they just thought like, why would I, this is so random, you know? And it's okay if people think luxury is superficial because it is comparing to saving the world, battling some much, much bigger issues for humanity and the planet. However, let's not forget that this is like a multi-trillion dollar industry and it gives many jobs it keeps people working it is actually driving 
and helping the economy so maybe not so superficial and unnecessary you know have you ever been blacklisted from a brand or you blacklist the brand i love this question i have to say touch wood that i still work with the brands that i worked with for the longest time since the beginning no need to stress yes smell the flowers sorry to get back on the topic the first luxury brand and the brand that ever reached out to me was Jimmy Choo and I believe this was in 2011 or 2012 but basically 10 years ago and it's still one of my absolute favorite brands um, to work with now like I feel like it's now family you know and for me I love first of all I love supporting brands that were there since the beginning and second of all I think it's so nice to maintain these long-term relationships because I would never get in like i don't know this kind of like ungrateful mood with the brand because at the end of the day i'm very very grateful to them but at the same time they respect me because i always say like listen this is not gonna work i don't want to do this my audience is only interested in this i don't want to like show stuff like it's very much a friendly and honest approach and i think that's something that brands respect and appreciate and equally so have i ever blacklisted a brand i wouldn't say so like there are times that i perhaps wouldn't like a collection of a certain brand and then i'm a bit like mm, i'm not so sure like every fashion week we receive way more invitations than I attend but I spoke to I also speak to my friends and we always say like this brand maybe not at the moment or maybe they don't like really value the relationship and you know nourish the relationship because relationships are to be nourished and it's like a very honest approach but you know I know whatever I say it can also get very misinterpreted like in one of my recent videos I said that I prefer Venice Film Festival to Cannes Film Festival and I explained why in a nice way just because Cannes is a little bit more crowded and a little bit more hectic and people are like oh my Oh my god you're trashing Khan like those are two different things I have an opinion well I have many opinions and I prefer Venice Film Festival to Cannes Film Festival or just the actual place the actual process of how it works it doesn't mean I don't like Cannes it just means I prefer Venice a little bit more and that's okay because if I wouldn't have an opinion how could I be a key opinion leader right absolutely my sister is laughing but i'm sure you agree i absolutely agree 100 percent. do you think i'm opinionated a little you're bit you're very opinionated but it's, it's that opinion that obviously uh people want to hear and that's why we're all here for and that's also why i do consulting for brands especially now more and more in italy as well because if you don't have an opinion and you don't have like analytical opinion how can you consult and give your opinion you yes. tell me so yeah that's basically that i think like there's certain brands that you try to work with and you just somehow like i don't know it's okay to not like really understand that you want the same thing but it, i wouldn't call it blacklisted i feel like the cancel culture and blacklisting it's not in my nature it's not in my persona so it's also important to give second chances I think so too. Some people like make mistakes and they just try to get better, try to learn. And if everybody just blacklists them, I mean, how many times have you made a mistake? I made fair share of mistakes, but I try to get better. And I think that's important. What do you do when you feel low and out of energy? I rarely ever feel low and out of energy, but for example, after the fashion month, I know I will want to lay down for like two days because I'm a little bit exhausted at that point. However, how I don't run out of energy too much is because I mentally prepare. So before uh, New York Fashion Week started, or like before Venice technically, I knew that I will be on the go for like more than five weeks and I mentally prepared. I'm like, okay, so now from today until the 5th of October, no breaks, no breaks. And I just, I think, I, I'm very strong mentally and I prepare very well. I also always try to put things in perspective and I always remind myself that I wanted to do this, that I've all, this is my dream job. I also am not, I know this is gonna sound so crazy, but I'm not like money and material stuff are not my main goal. So for me, this is not like a rat race. Like it's not like, let's do it. Let's like, you know, let's just, I think it can get very difficult if you're just money, 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 money. And that's what you go for. And then you're like, 
like so greedy and so money motivated and you go for it i do this like out of love and passion and how can you get tired of that are you also a massive workaholic and you're very focused on work I think what gets me tired at the end of the fashion week is more like waking up, travel, travel, like speak to my friends and my colleagues and employees. And I say, you know, when people think this is an easy, this is an easy job and this is just so, it's quite like, it can be quite exhausting because you don't have that downtime. You can never like fully relax. There's always something on your schedule. Like it's Saturday and I have stuff on my schedule, but I enjoy it. That's what I'm here for. Were you scared to take off in a plane with a hole in it? I would freak out. So guys, I don't know if you follow my stories on my Instagram. You'll probably hear a little bit, <laughs> a little bit in my London Fashion Week vlog. But my flight from New York was at 7.30. I got on the plane, I put the earphones on. I unpacked all of my stuff around me, like, you know, the chargers, laptop, blah, blah, blah. And I started watching some videos. And after like 40 minutes, I'm like, why are we not taking off? This is a bit strange, but I wasn't listening. Then I take up my earphones and I ask and our plane had a hole in it so they had to take pictures and send to Dallas how big do you think this hole was I don't know and I don't want to know all I cared about is to see that that flight has landed that's all I bet it was like a coin size hole it doesn't matter don't or do you think it was like a hole it really doesn't matter they sent pictures to Dallas. Dallas was like, mm, we're not sure, maybe let's test. No, I don't think that's what they said. They basically, after two hours of waiting to get an A-OK -okay from Dallas, they told us to the plane. I mean, plane of like 300 passengers. I think it's like 300 passengers, no? A huge plane, you know? Everybody the plane with all of your belongings. Then we waited outside for like 30 minutes for them to pressurize the cabin to understand, I guess, if the pressure, because it's very important and right that the cabin is pressurized and if there's a hole the cabin pressure could drop so <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> because uh, I was actually scared to take off in a plane with a hole but I just needed to sleep and at that point like there was really not much I could do you know what I mean like you have to trust you have to trust the process and I trust this company that I was flying with I trust in human race i trust that people who do their job can do their job properly especially in these kind of places so you just do your job and you let other people do their job and that way i think world gets a little bit less anxious what is your best advice to never give up on your dreams i think if they're like definitely definitely 100 percent your dreams you will never give up on them you don't need any advice you just go for it but sometimes it's also good to give up on what you think is your dream you know because it will take you somewhere else where you didn't even know that you like i didn't even know that this would be my dream job i knew i wanted to work in a work like a fashion related sector but i thought I, I spoke about this in the dilemmas video i thought i wanted to be a fashion designer and my mom said like mm, I'm not so sure about it and I thought it was my dream but I gave up on it and I found another way to work in fashion which I think I prefer way more so yeah I don't know if this answers your question but it's my two cents would love to see a day in the life of your assistant I don't actually know how to describe if there's a one day day in life every day is different no every day is different but let me know what exactly would you like to see which aspect interests you the most and I can see what I can do about it what was the simple chain necklace you wore in your Kati unboxing video? I wear it pretty much every day. So I have the one with the diamond that you know is the Kati one that I got for my boyfriend. And the one here is from Ideal. It's actually, I'm currently wearing only one earring and it's also an Ideal earring. I love it. It brings a bit of light to my face. Uh, I literally just thought that I'm not filming. Imagine if I wasn't filming. I like... I, I got stressed out so to answer a question what stresses me out one thing that stresses me out i think is repeating the same thing that that stresses me out so today i went i went to buy a new date piercing and i came to the counter they were like literally for for date and i was like i would like to have a look at this one and this one and i named them like one was like diamond one and the pearl one and she was like okay uh which one did you say and i was like this one and this one and then she took the first one on and then i was like mm, no this one is too similar to the one i had and then she said okay but is is there any other that you would like to see and i was like yeah the other one and then she's like which one and then i said this one she said oh you would like to see the pro one even though i said like three times i would also like to see the pro one and i understand that sometimes people take time and it's not her fault at all it's just my thing it's my issue for me when i have to repeat the same thing many times i don't know why it bothers me but it really bothers me i guess because you don't think people are listening to the full message or something maybe also because i think like i remember things 
things so well that I don't have a lot of understanding for when people are like and you know what's very important that you are aware of what's bothering yeah. you so that you can work on yourself without to obviously I remember once, I, I'm very precise, also like when I work, I'm very precise, so I will tell you exactly what I need from you. And I once spoke to somebody else's assistant and I was like, okay, so they instructed me to instruct her with what needed to be done. So I said, you need to take this key and you need to bring it to this hotel and you need to do this. And she was like, okay, and then I saw she's not making any notes. So I was like, do you know where you need to go? And she's like, uh, and I was like, do you know the name of the hotel? And she's like, uh, and I was like, you need to write these things down if you cannot remember them and i just like i think like repeating things is a waste of time a little bit for everybody you know i think people should be writing more things down that anyway that i don't know how i got to this topic sorry it's a bit of rambling now uh, but it's it's my problem you know it's nobody you, know, you study pharmacy you you learn a lot about how to listen and about your listening skills imagine every patient having to repeat like right. where it itches or so. maybe it's also like a lot of things a lot of things i have taken from my pharmacy life i'm now going off tangent but like one of the biggest things that i've taken from the pharmacy world is that we are never allowed to assume never that's like i think the biggest thing because you cannot just assume that somebody is like not pregnant if you're selling the medication or giving them a prescription medication you have to ask if it could be dangerous you have to so i always like also in the fashion world like i don't assume that everything is just going to run i always think of okay it's 15 minutes in a car but if the traffic is bad at 3 p.m it could be 45 minutes in a car like i always try to account for other possible outcomes i guess are you still using notion for schedules and productivity 100 percent. i love 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 my notion i have a perfect setup my to-do list my morning routine my goals my routines everything like for me especially now that i got an ipad i mean i've had an ipad for a while but now i set it up perfectly for me and for productivity and i really 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 love using notion it's amazing how you don't feel all bloated and swollen after so many hours of traveling of course i do guys like what do you think that I just um, you know definitely feel bloated I think yeah 100% especially like when you fly and travel there are like few things I try to avoid like for example I don't eat plain food because I find it like it's very salty and I as a person tend to retain so much water I think more than an average human it's just like and I don't eat very salty food because of that I try to have like regular massages well I didn't have any obviously New York or London but I will have when I'm in Milan it's just like you should see like if when I wear socks when i take off a sock around my ankle and that's the worst like you know i get this can you see it like line and you know what's the worst i'm later going to a show and then you can see it because i go like with bare legs and then you can see the sock mark and what can i do what can i do it's a bit of reality i mean, I, I don't think anybody expects me to be perfect like especially after that first journey to new york i got like a biggest spot here and it bothered me so much that my lips were so dry because like i'm only one you know i had like so much luggage to take care of so many bags so many things so many layovers sitting on a plane for three hours without taking off then sitting back at the airport for another four hours for 40 hours yeah i was trying like you know i'm a human person and i don't have like a huge glam team traveling with me making sure that i got my facial on the plane and no like i travel just like anybody else with like a small well actually a huge benefit that when i travel long haul etc i fly business at this point in my career but for the longest time starting my career i was flying economy and not just me like a lot of my colleagues i remember once my friend sandra was late for the flight in new york we were flying back to london we're flying like back the like the like cheapest flight like the not the cheapest but like you know the most economy you can fly and i bought us burgers at shake shack while i was waiting for her she was running late so i was keeping the door because she called me she's like i'm running i passed the security keep the door so i was like my friend is coming she's coming you have to wait for her her luggage is on this plane if you don't wait for her you'll have to deplane her luggage that will take way longer she's here she's here she's running and then i saw her in a fur coat it was like february running and i was like she's there she's there so finally she arrives and she gets on the plane and then i'm getting all happy like a 
as a hero friend with the burger and the lady is like oh and where do you think you're going and i was like on the plane and she's like you have one hand luggage too many i was like what do you mean i have like a like a trolley and i have a bag and she's like and that carrier bag and it was my burger and i was like this is a burger it's gonna be in my belly in like 20 minutes and i'm gonna sleep and she's like no you have to eat it now or otherwise you cannot get on the plane because you have three bags <laughs> can you imagine so i used to travel like this and then i was like no please let me get on with the burger if i put it in the trolley you know or if i put it in the big carrier like so after a bit of an argument she let me on the plane and i just ate it and that was it but it was like that kind of flying and yeah why did you choose to stop being a pharmacist it was never my dream calling it was more like something that i was fine with doing like an okay career for me i was doing a pretty good job i would say and honestly it was intense <laughs> it's quite an intense job for a lady i think it can be quite like a lot of pressure also from the management team if you work in a big chain but why i stopped it was like a something that was in my head like okay my blogging is getting bigger is more time consuming i was spending all of my holidays and all of my salary to do fashion weeks and that was pretty you know it was it wasn't easy it wasn't like as enjoyable like all of my working hours i was thinking about also what i really wanted to do but like it was cooking you know it was cooking this is how i am in a personality like my personality it was in my mind but i was not ready to cut it like to make the decision and quit so one day i requested some holidays because in pharmacy you have to request your holidays for a year in advance and then like if you need something in like let's say three four months you kind of can request but it's not likely to happen so i requested one day or something like that i remember it was really mundane and my area manager said like no and it was like in three months time and for me it was like i got invited to like a very special press trip and i needed like friday saturday sunday so i was like i asked for saturday because i was always working every i never had like two days together i was working on thursday and i was working then on saturday so on fridays i was not working and sundays the pharmacy was closed so i wanted the saturday off and it was a no and he said no we really need our pharmacists to work on saturdays because nobody else wants to and for me it was just like because i was a young pharmacist and i had to work saturdays because i had no choice so he said that and and then I literally was like, and I would like to get your address to send my resignation letter. It was, the conversation went like that. And then he said, yeah, I saw that coming. Because literally everything I ever asked, he was like a no. So I was like, no problem, bye. <laughs> and I never regret it. And one thing that I think is very important and that I tell everybody to this date is that my sister said when I said, I think I'm gonna quit, like at one point, she said, listen, whatever happens, you have to know that I will make sure you always have a roof above your head. And then if things don't work out, you have a degree. Yes. So that's the most, I think not many people have that privilege to have a family member that will have them squat. <laughs> so i'm very grateful for that and i will always 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 be grateful to my sister for that because basically she's the reason why i could but chase now my people have turned <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily said i don't think so you're still my biggest rock oh. like my strength someone's asking are you going to milan fashion week indeed i am and i'm <laughs> very much so. very much so like it's not even there's still time and i already have like 12 shows confirmed and i don't know how many events and presentations and jobs and shoots like many hour shoots long shoots yeah i will need all the strength and patience for that female 40 and still single is there any hope to succeed in life love and life of course like we do not all encounter success or love at the same age like i found my love in my 30s you know what i mean i think that many people find their love in their 20s my parents they got married at 22 my mom was 22 isn't that crazy and she like was so happy to have my sister at 23 it was like her absolute dream to have a child at 23 for me at 23 i was like clueless i mean my mom was your age i was nine this is shocking <laughs> imagine having a nine year old daughter shocking and another three year old shocking <laughs> shocking I, when I, I remember my mom when i was three and she seemed like such an adult so yeah anyway love happens at any age there are like people there are other people that are men that are in their 40s and searching for love i just i think that 
obviously i don't know anything about you so i can't say get out there i can't say stop searching i, I don't know like maybe you still have like some unsolved business with like an old love story or or no love story i don't know but i think what matters is to always believe that love and success can happen at any age because also like the age brackets are moving like things can happen at any age one thing you would change about your boyfriend and one about you one thing i would change about my boyfriend <laughs> why are you laughing <laughs> do you know what it is no i don't there i mean yeah <laughs> we once played this game and when it was like one thing i would change but he said only one actually to be honest there's not really much i would change about him we are so similar so like something that i say i would change about him he likes to say sometimes what i should do he like what he believes i should do he loves stronger than him like even if i'm walking to the bathroom and the lights are off he will say like put the lights on you know like he thinks he's making it easy but it's kind of like commenting but he thinks i'm the same he calls me grillo parlante which is the gemini cricket he says i always go behind him and say what he should do <laughs> so i guess we're very similar but i don't think i would change that about him because very often his advice is quite on on spot he is very much i don't know actually like a, we're so similar then it's the same thing about me one thing i would change about him is one thing i would change about me he would change about me is that i'm messy i'm a messy person for sure he would change that about me because he cannot stand mess and it bothers him so much and one thing i would change about him is complaining about my mess now i'm not with him for four days so i can't think of anything but if i was with him for like a one day only i would for sure come up with something immediately nonsense what? absolutely not we get on so well the last time that we had like a small argument was in ibiza which was like two months ago and uh, when i had that horrible flight <laughs> you know the story when i had that horrible flight to new york i called him and i was like baby uh, this this day was so difficult can we just please have an argument so i can get it out of my system <laughs> i think it would help me and he laughed so much but in all honesty like i think now that we're together for a while we kind of like know each other very well and it's just so nice to have a peaceful relationship with somebody that trusts you and that you don't have to call all the time or text or answer or tell who you're with or where you are or, or think if they are with someone i trust him 1000 percent and i know it's the same other way around which is the most beautiful and most important thing for me in relationship because i cannot be with a jealous partner and trust me i've been there before we need another productivity video ipad and planner would you guys like to see that like a productivity like how i organize my ipad my planner my day i don't know because sometimes i do do these videos but then i don't think it's what you guys come to my channel for so i don't really try let me know was it difficult for you to get a mini kelly i'm struggling to get one now would be a good time to show you my mini kelly's they're somewhere here shall we talk about mini kelly's it's not a dedicated video to hermes bags but was it difficult to get a mini kelly yes it was difficult it was not easy i got my first mini, mini kelly after like two and a half years of collecting hermes bags now i have four there we go i have the uh, mini kelly in blue broom this is in the jade a green one and this is a gold with palladium hardware they're all the same but this one is in chevre leather so it's a bit different leather than the epson ones and equally so it's a bit softer and more flexible i also have a black one in black epson one which was the first one that i got i got it in june 2020 and it's the bag that i carried with me the night that we got robbed so it's like why i have it so i have four mini kelly's and i would say that at the beginning it was very very difficult to get a mini kelly bag the hardest bag to get but as now the bigger bags are coming back and people are still like interested in uh, breaking 35 kelly 32 bigger the better i think now it's getting easier to get a mini kelly that's my opinion do you have bad sleep since you travel so much i never suffer with bad sleep literally i could fall asleep anytime on any yeah, kind of <laughs> anywhere i just think like my brain needs sleep and even like jet lag i don't really suffer because i just need to push myself to stay awake that's the hardest part but then i end up adjusting so easily it's in serbian but we will translate it says meaning 
what's the best facial treatment besides happiness i think hydrafacial for me personally i just love how it gets rid of the dead skin cells how it kind of like cleans the pores and the glow that it leaves afterwards hydrafacials for me i use the platinum one and i'm very very happy with it any plans to buy property in london i think this could be something very nice and something that i've been trying to do for now how long quite some time yeah Sorry. but i find it very hard to find what i want you guys know me and you guys know what kind of standards i have kind of for property would be definitely like the zones that i like in london and yeah someone's asking how can we send pr packages for post i don't actually receive or accept pr packages besides from the brands that i have ongoing relationship with or the brands that i really like i know there are many influencers that are like this is my address send there but for me that's quite unsustainable and not very wise in terms of like i think it's wasteful i don't want to receive thousands of packages of things that i don't want because i will not present them you're wasting your product i think it's wasteful for in every possible way and there's someone that wants that so i think it's always more important to develop a relationship to ask me hey do you like this brand are you interested in this do you use it and if not i can also say like yes or no if i'm interested in trying something and then if i don't like it i can still say i'm so sorry i didn't like this product i would rather not receive it etc i think that's more fair and more sustainable way to treat this so do you have any future plans not now like marrying filippo or moving to another country i'm a very spontaneous person not about marrying i mean i think i will marry filippo i don't know so quick your dog is doing he's so silly I'm marrying filippo i think i'm kind of interested <laughs> <laughs> no i mean i'm interested but i can't really plan it you know it's not really doesn't work like that but yeah moving to another there's, city, potential, there's there. potential there yeah and um, moving to another country at the moment i honestly have no idea guys my life is like very who knows what's your favorite thing about each fashion week in each city i love this question so new york fashion week i love that it's in new york it's a big city it gives you that new york vibe at the beginning of the fashion month it's very far like somewhere you most likely haven't been now for a few months very exciting i think love it it's a city that gives it a special extraness and i always feel like the european on another continent you know then i come to london and there's this special feeling when i arrive to the first london show that is feeling like at home it gives it a little bit of i don't know i just feel so special when i come in london and then i see all these familiar faces and the prs are like oh it's tomorrow i move like let her come in and then i go to my favorite shows and i feel so comfortable and i know where everything is and it's like if i break a heel i know where to go to fix it you know what i mean it's my like it feels like home it's amazing then i go to milan and it's this milanese vibe the incredible shows like fendi prada gucci that i get to see i get dressed in these looks i'm feeling very loved in italy and the italian mood is very much my vibe like latin you know then we go to paris and it's very long but paris is such a beautiful city it's like a little bit angry <laughs> because you know it's paris but it's so chic i wear black i feel like i have late night dinners and i drink wine in paris and i never really drink even so i don't know it's just like it gives me this paris mood of me you know like i feel a bit of like an adult in paris and independent and i spend money which i wouldn't necessarily spend i always end up spending money in paris shopping also it's the end so yeah i don't know if that explains it but that's about it someone's saying will you be my friend i thought we are friends i thought we we're all friends because i when i whenever i meet you guys like today i was walking and i saw some people and people just wave at me and like i say hi and i feel like all of you are my friends i really do boyfriend of five years said i'm not worth moving back for i waited years should i end it or that's the last question how can anybody say you're not worth it first of all it's very important to know how he worded it is is this is if this is how you word he, this is how he worded it 100 ended if anybody tells you you're not worth of something for me so it's, it's a big no like i always think like if someone would like now that i'm thinking that if someone would tell me something like that i would tell like my father and my father would say like how can anybody think you're not worth something you know like it's a, like it's a matter of that your person you're that one person should think you're worth anything i moved to 
Paris for love I moved you know like I don't know for me it's like okay it is easy it's not like I moved somewhere where I couldn't work or I, you know it would be very unfortunate but I think that you should be quite realistic if like where you live is not possible for your other half be realistic see if you can move for him would you move for him if you wouldn't move for him either then I think it's kind of like fair, fair that you neither want to move for each other and maybe you don't even like each other that much. I think there are a lot of things to put on in consideration. But yeah, as, as it stands and just black and white like that as you wrote it, I told you my opinion. The most important thing is to know yourself worth. The most important thing if you don't think you're worth it and if you don't love yourself nobody will ever like i i think that once you put yourself in the first place nobody can disrespect you and like not in an egoistical way just in i know what i'm worth it like like i said i did move for my boyfriend but i was very realistic about it i was like okay my job is flexible his is not so it's pretty fair but equally so i don't let anybody like disrespect me in a way that would be able to tell me that i'm not worth it that's about it guys i hope it wasn't too long i love you lots i have to go get ready because we have a show in two hours to go to bye